guys and welcome to today's show. Today we are going to be reviewing a beautiful automatic Flieger watch from Stover. Now this kind of brings me on to the, uh, the, <laughs> the subject of the pronunciation of Stover. I'm not sure, guys, my, please my German speaking audience if you could help me out here. I tried to research this, I couldn't find a definitive answer. Is it pronounced Stoa? or Stoa, or is the W a V sound, is it Stova or Stova, I have no idea which one it is, uh, I found conflicting articles about the pronunciation online, so uh, guys please help me out in the comments, which uh, phonetically as well if you can, which is the correct pronunciation, I decided to go with Stova, or, or did I say Stova, I can't even remember, but anyway guys, please help me out, uh, leave a comment below, I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, so, as I was saying, we're going to be reviewing a automatic Flieger watch. Uh, these, of course, are hugely iconic, something new to the channel. And I've got to thank my good friend Steve for lending this in. He is a uh, British viewer from the United Kingdom. And he very graciously lent his watch in for review. He's a Patreon member as well. Uh, so a very valued, respected uh, member of our community. So thank you, Steve, again. I really, really appreciate it. And hopefully after today, I will be returning it. It will be flying back uh, to you. And I, I know you've missed it a hell of a lot. And I could certainly see why. So anyway, um, oh, I haven't even done wristwatch check. Uh, as we're doing an aviation watch today, I am wearing my little flighty. This is the Flightmaster SNA411. Uh, I've got to admit, when it comes to flight watches, I like mine a little bit more complicated. I, there's no particular reason why, it's just I love that aesthetic, uh, you know, with all the scale, different scales and the bezel and all the rest of it. In my opinion, this is one of the best aviation watches for the money. Even though I own the, the Navi Time as well, which is very similar to this, I still adore this piece. Uh, this is a lot more robust. Quartz piece, dual time, 200 meters water resistance, screw down, uh, screw down, pushes as well, an outstanding piece, I've, I've also reviewed this, absolutely gorgeous and of course perfect timing, I've got one of my favourite Art Deco uh, posters, aviation posters has just uh, appeared on my wallpaper. Anyway, so without further ado, let's change perspectives and have a closer look at this amazing German automatic piece. Today I am finally going to be reviewing uh, my good friend Steve's uh, Stover, this is the 40 millimeter. Flieger Classic and this of course is a hugely famous uh, German company. They're actually from the Black Forest region of Germany. Uh, they were founded in 1927. They are quite a historic, very well-known German brand and of course in 1939 they released, uh, they were amongst five companies that released uh, Flieger watches. Uh, Flieger is just a German word, it actually translates to flyer. Uh, so pilot watches basically and these were made uh, for the German Luftwaffe in 1939 and they were one of five companies to do so. The other companies were of course RWC, Wempe, Laco and Lange and Zon. So quite a prestigious lineup. The first thing you'll notice about this watch is uh, its incredibly distinctive style. Uh, Flieger watches are probably the most recognizable uh, style of watches there is. It's all about form and function. They are entirely made to be the most, and I've got to say, they they probably are the most easy to read watches out there. Originally, the, the early versions back in the 1930s were a lot bigger. They, they were around about uh, 55 millimeters. I mean, really huge uh, watches that uh, they were like having a clock on your wrist. Uh, this one is a little bit more smaller, more modern at 40 millimeters. They were deliberately big because back way back then, the pilots of you know propeller uh, planes like this obviously didn't have pressurized cabins, and they would have worn uh, goggles and a big flight suit. So this would have been worn over the flight suit. Now I must stress that it actually did originally come on this strap. This is the standard beautiful leather strap. It is very very well made. Uh, signed Stover there. Uh, since 1927, very very cool indeed, lovely little signed buckle, uh, but I've got to be honest, I'm not a fan of the little stamp there, I'm just not a fan of it, it's just, just me personally, it's just my preference, uh, if you like that kind of thing, by all means enjoy it, I put it on this 
This is actually also German. In the previous video, I <laughs> I didn't know what act leader was, but apparently it just means um, it's uh, leather, made made of leather. So uh, now this particular strap I have reviewed. So check out in, in the previous uh, video of my strap reviews. I just put it on a one piece because I just I, I just love the strap and I think it works with these very high contrast. Uh, numerals on the dial with the stitching. I just think it matched really well. Back to the watch. La let's quickly get the dimensions out of the way. I mentioned that the original Flieger watches were of course a lot bigger. Now Steve, please don't panic. I have put sellotape on the ends as you know. So let's get quickly get the dimensions out of the way. As you see, nice 40 millimeter diameter. Got a really nice thin 10 millimeters. Very, very thin. Got a lug width of 20. And lug to lug, we're looking at 48. So a really nice, comfortable size. I think it works. I think if they had gone any smaller, it would have lost that that Flieger look. You know, a Flieger watch needs to be big. Uh, this is one of the, f you know, aviation watches generally are the only style of watches that, that should be big, you know, like the Navi Timer, uh, watches, watches like that. At the end of the day, Pilots have got to quickly glance down, do calculations, especially in this time and, you know, the propeller age where they were wearing goggles and it was uh, all the rest of it. So I'm going to take the strap off so, just so we can have a closer look at the case. Now this case is a, a very simple three-piece case design. When you look at watches designed for the military, uh, they were often more simple, you know, they're often more simple manufactured, obviously because they were made in qu large quantities. And when you simplify something, there's less chance of it going wrong. Uh, so basically we have three main components, which would have been the case back, the actual case, and then the bezel. We have this beautiful, um, it's very slightly domed sapphire. It's, it's hardly noticeable. I love how the, uh, the reference there is, is, is engraved on the side. It really gives it that military look. The entire case is matte finish. Uh, you know, there's no ostentatious design. Yeah, you could say maybe the machine, the beautifully machined onion crown here is a little bit kind of, uh, you know, a little bit decorative, but actually it's an old to that er earlier area. You've got to remember watches from the early part of the century were still kind of making that transition from pocket watches. And if we see pocket watches, they have that onion crown as well. Uh, if you even look at my grandfather's pocket watch, especially for manually wound watches, onion crowns were much more popular. So of course this is the automatic version, you can get the, uh, the manual wind version as well. You can get in a variety of different movements. This of course is the ETA 2824-2 and this is the top grade version. And also they've decorated the hell out of it. I mean beautiful blued screws, uh, pelage work there, a little Cote de Genie finishing on the rotor. No expense has been spared. Uh, this particular grade of the 2824-2, we're looking at about plus minus four seconds and at the wor very worst plus or minus 15. This particular one is uh, well within uh, those parameters. So top performer, very affordable to maintain, great reliable movements. And I love that they've actually put a display back on this. You can get versions without. Uh, the case back is held down by these beautiful screws there. Completely stainless steel, obviously. Sapphire crystal on both sides, as you come to expect. And probably the nicest touch of them all, made in Germany. Uh, water resistance is only 5 ATM. We haven't got a screw down crown, obviously. This is an aviation watch. It's not uh, designed to be uh, that particular water resistant. Beautiful little signed stover there. 25 joules, obviously, uh, operates at 28,800 beats per hour. So really quite nice, smooth uh, movement to it. Absolutely outstanding. So let's look at the dial because the dial really is the most iconic and instantly recognizable feature of a Flieger watch. To be honest, it's all about the dial. Quite deceptively simple, but Actually, the dial is probably where the most uh, most money has been spent in the production of this. Stolver actually outsourced the production of the dial to a company called uh, Schatzel. Now, Schatzel, and I, God, hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Please forgive me, my German. Oh, well, I don't speak any German, so. Uh, but anyway, Schatzel, they 
produce dials. Uh, they're probably the premier dial uh, manufacturers in Germany. They, they do work for some of the most prestigious German brands. Really go up and close. It's absolutely immaculate. We have uh, Luminova C3 Super Luminova, so it's super, super bright, as you would expect. Beautiful little made in Germany. In a second, we'll have a look at the uh, the Loom Shot. Actually, let's let's look at the Loom Shot right now. So easy to read. Those beautiful Arabic numerals. That little triangle. Those markers as well. The, the application is impeccable so equally spread very um, responsive and that's second hand my god it's it's quite thin uh, when you see it in normal light but then <laughs> glows so bright uh, in the dark absolutely gorgeous amazing loom so definitely uh, passes the loom test anyway let's take it back to the studio just to finish off talking about the dial, there are several versions you can get the uh, version clean dial without the stover uh, branding on it which is more kind of traditional I guess and more like the original versions I actually quite like the way they've signed Stover in a, in a kind of very dark grey so it's hardly noticeable very subtle um, so at the same time it, it you know at a glance it doesn't it's not that noticeable but it is there completely matte black dial of course which really contrasts to that to the uh, uh, Arabic numerals. Now another beautiful feature of this particular watch is the blued hand. When you have blued hands this is something that's quite uh, labor intensive. It's a very precise skill to get the steel heated to that temperature to make it uh, you know to get that blued effect. It's something that's not cheap to do. In contrast if you look at um, some of the really cheap Chinese watches that simply paint blue onto the steel you get a kind of sloppy uneven uh, paint effect uh, uh, rather than a, a beautiful solid blue like that so it's a really very subtle detail but you know you can tell that no expenses have been spared and that's something that Stover c certainly has it does it does feel like an incredibly made quite a refined piece considering at the end of the day it's just a, a very utilitarian military watch but that's what's great about the Germans is that they are able to provide this kind of quality at a relatively affordable price. I mean, we're talking about just under $900. So the crown action, as you come to expect, is, is quite smooth. It's not, you know, there's a little bit of grainy sound as you can hear, but, you know, it's extremely solid when you pull the crown out, changing the time. There is a date version as well, uh, but it's hackable, obviously. The whole watch is a very light 120 grams uh, with the strap and the buckle. Now another very distinguishing feature of a Flieger is that triangle, two dots. This is really just to, at a glance, easily distinguish which way is up and where the 12 o'clock position is. It's simply a function, which is everything about this watch. It's just all about function. There's no kind of ostentatious or or um, gratuitous design. I mean, the hands is probably the most um, beautified thing here. So just to quickly finish off, if we have a look back at the movement again, you can get various options with different rotors. You can actually have your name inscribed on the rotor, which I really think is a, is a pretty cool thing. I haven't seen that kind of customization uh, with, a, with a company before, so it's, it's quite a nice touch. And you can actually get the same watch with lesser versions of this particular ETA. Um, so if you want to kind of cut down the costs and have it without display back, uh, and just a, you know, a, a kind of mid-grade version of this particular movement, you can. So let's do an all-important wrist shot. So, as you can see, with my tiny little wrist, it wears very, very well. Mainly due to the curved lugs here, which curve down nicely. Now, it is raised a bit because of the one-piece uh, leather strap there, but had it been on that particular uh, leather strap, it would have been even more of a comfortable fit. It's extremely comfortable. It wears remarkably like a dress watch being so thin, uh, which I really do like. It's got a very clean aesthetic that that is, it's strangely tasteful, you know, which is, which is bizarre because it's so utilitarian and, and so kind of minimalist. As you can see, it's extremely easy to, to read at any distance. Uh, it's quite smart looking, even though it's uh, not supposed to be. It's an outstanding watch, I've got to say. It's, it's really, it's very comfortable. It's cool to have a, 
a watch at this this price that has heritage to it that has a story um, that is you know a lot of people actually mistake the stovers for homages which they don't actually realize it's it's history which is which is a bit bizarre but definitely worth every penny if you're into fliegers uh, yeah i mean you can't go wrong here it's absolutely gorgeous amazing finish i mean very high quality it's everything you'd you'd expect from a german made watch gotta be honest this is not a style of watch that particularly intrigues me but having worn it having experienced it it's it's certainly grown on me it's going to be very very sad to see it go back to steve but uh, i can see why he's missing it so much okay guys so i'm going to leave it there before we go i just want to share with you uh, some of Stowers other uh, offerings and uh, because they don't just do Flieger watches they actually have a whole line of uh, divers and dress watches anti design very minimalist Bauhaus looking there obviously we have the Fliegers what else have we got various different variations beautiful highly decorated dress watches I mean absolutely gorgeous let's just have a closer look at that Oh, stunning. I mean, look at that pocket watch. Oh, look at that one with the Romans. My God. Now that is pure class. Something that the Germans do so well is that very simple aesthetic that is just so tastefully done. No kind of um, flamboyant over-the-top design. It's just something very classic, very tasteful, always look good. And this has probably got to be my one of my favourites of the bunch, Pro Diver. I would, I would seriously, oh, just look at, the, oh, look at those. See some of the early ones they did way back in the uh, 60s. Very, very cool indeed. What an amazing brand. I mean, this is definitely a brand I'm going to come back to. My God, look at those. Look at those. Very, very cool. Very tooly, down to business, easy, legible dive watches. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I mean, what a cool brand. Slightly avant garde design, slightly more modern. Quite an interesting complication there. Look at these vintage stovers. Rarely from the early days, 1927. God, gorgeous, gorgeous. So cool to see where they've they've come from and they're still putting out tastefully done very classic absolutely gorgeous anyway guys i just thought i'd quickly share that certainly brand on my radar certainly and uh, we'll be returning to them anyway let's take it back to the studio okay welcome back guys so as you can see a really beautiful timepiece maybe arguably the best flieger for the money i i i doubt that uh, you're gonna find better quality in the IWC, certainly, obviously, in the Lange and Zun offerings, but I think for the money, uh, Stover or Stover or however it's pronounced, cannot be beat. I mean, you've got a really top grade Swiss ETA in there, assembled and made in Germany, absolutely unbeatable. I cannot recommend it enough. Uh, personally, not my style. I like them a little bit more complicated, as you guys know, but of course, you know, I'm, I, I I had to take a look. It's always been something I've, I've wanted to uh, look a little bit more into and share with you guys. So please let me know your thoughts, queries, questions, opinions, all the rest of it down in the comments below. And of course, uh, please nominate any of the Stover watches that you would like to see reviewed. I'm really dying to take a look at their diver watches, their pro divers. I mean, God, their dress watches are gorgeous as well. It's definitely a brand on my radar. Uh, you know, German watchmaking is certainly high up on, on my agenda. It's, it's, it's a highly overlooked, uh, personally, I think, by the mainstream, especially so many strong companies uh, and strong offerings. And the quality and the price is there. And that is what uh, I just gets me excited about um, watches, you know. So, I mean, it cannot be beat. German watchmaking uh, is another reason why I have to go to Germany. Uh, as soon as possible, as soon as my lungs allow me to, I will be flying over there. Anyway, I really look forward to that. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it, found it useful. It really does help me. And as always, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.